Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HP ProLiant DL360 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL360 Gen 10 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, this video is gonna be all about raids. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, show you an example of one of the raids just to so see what they look like. We're going to put up a graph that's gonna be a nice little chart that shows you the differences in the types of compatible raid, as well as the raid levels, uh, how much cash they have, what PCI gen they are, if it's a hardware raid or software raid. So we're just gonna go through all of that. And then at the end, we're actually going to install one of the RAID cards for you and show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install it. And then we're gonna show you how to configure your RAID and show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure it. So there's gonna be a whole lot going on in this video. So sit tight, let's get going. have my EST gear on, we're safe to work inside our machine. So I laid out uh, the RAID we're gonna be installing and all you're gonna need is a T15 bit. This is not a regular Phillips head, you're gonna need a T15 bit. So pop the latch, open the lid, pretty much like any server you've been in before. All right, we're gonna be installing our RAID right here and there's a couple of key points. You will notice there are these two holes right here that you can see through the PCB board. Then you have your actual connector that goes right here and then you have these two two screws that go right here. So the two uh, holes right here is where I like to start. So on this blue piece, might be a little bit hard to see on camera, there's these two little pegs that are sitting up. Those two pegs are where we're gonna start. So let's line those up. So we'll just drop those on and then we're gonna uh, push this down and you can feel it uh, connecting. Then we're gonna grab our T15 and we're gonna screw it down. It's pretty much just that simple. It's a, a pretty easy install overall. Uh, we didn't even have to remove any risers. Uh, there's just a great clear path uh, to it. So now we're just gonna install our plugs into port one and to port two. So we'll do port two first. And then we'll do port one. All right, so we'll click them into place. There's number one in number two. So they are firmly clicked into place. Make sure your wires are still run nice and clean along this little black plastic piece and all the way to the back plane. And that's just it. That's how easy it is to install your RAID. So now we're gonna show you how to configure RAID. Hey everyone, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to configure RAID. Specifically in this video, we're gonna be configuring RAID 1. The steps we're gonna to show today are gonna to be very similar no matter what RAID level you want to configure. So if you follow along, you'll be able to configure whatever RAID level you desire. I would like to note though, that if you are trying to configure a different RAID level from RAID 1, you may have a different set of requirements. First of all, the actual RAID controller that you're gonna be using, you wanna make sure that it is supporting the RAID level that you want to configure. Scott broke down all the RAID controllers and their supported RAID levels earlier in the video, so if you wanna go back and look at that, the other thing to consider is how many drives does your RAID level need? RAID 1, for instance, needs a minimum of two drives, while a RAID level like RAID 5 is going to utilize three drives or more. So I encourage you to do a little bit of digging and some research to figure out exactly what you need. But without a further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is power on our server. And during post, we want to press F10 to enter into the intelligent provisioning. Once we're in intelligent provisioning, we have four options to choose from. We want to select the smart storage administrator option. Once we're in smart storage administrator, we want to select the RAID controller that we're using on the left hand side of the screen. And then we want to click on this blue configure button. And then we're going to go ahead and click on create array. And those two drives that we saw under unassigned drives is going to be displayed here. 
In our case, we're gonna go select all of these drives because we want to use both of them for our RAID 1 array. Once we have our desired drives selected, we can click on Create Array. In our case, we got a warning message. This is because the capacities of both drives are different from each other. Whenever we do this, this is going to prevent us from using the full capacity of our largest drive. This is something to be aware of whenever you're purchasing drives for a system, but to break everything down, basically, if you want to configure a RAID array, make sure all of your drives are the same capacity. So we are aware of this, and we're going to go ahead and press yes. And over here, if you go to the top left, you can see these two RAID levels. We have the option between RAID 0 and RAID 1. We're going to go ahead and leave it at RAID 1. And we're going to leave everything else at its defaults. And one of the great things about this configuration utility is that for each option it has in blue text, what is this? It'll basically explain to you what it is, so whenever you're going through this configuration and you don't know what something is or there's something you may want to change, you can just use this option here and it'll explain it to you. Once we're done, we can click Create Logical Drive. We are going to get another warning message. We can go ahead and click on Yes to continue. And then here is displayed the final screen. It will be a breakdown of everything we have in our array. If everything looks correct, go ahead and click on finish. And there we have it. We have successfully configured RAID 1. As you can see, it was very straightforward. And if you followed the steps throughout this video, then you'll have no problem configuring any RAID array. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you're interested in purchasing any servers or workstations for your home lab or data center, we got a wide variety of options to choose from, ranging from HP, Dell, Supermicro, and more. If you're interested, head to our website or email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com.